الحمد لله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear fellows and students and my colleagues and who are appearing specifically speaking in the FCPS examinations internal medicine or those who are appearing in the FCPS clinical hematology now this is the part which I have to take these are actually this is a difficult one as uh, I only talking about previously the anemia the evaluation of anemia is concerned now I have actually take already taken about 16 or 17 classes on the on anemia how to evaluate anemia now different type of anemia which I have already talked about today I want to talk very briefly because just to fulfill the number of it that is the aplastic anemia and the myelodysplastic syndromes all leading to the myeloproliferative disorders or lymphoproliferative disorders aplastic anemia, pancytopenias, myelodysplastic syndrome and myeloproliferative and lymphoproliferative disorders these are the malignancies of the hemopathic system. Now I am Professor Sayyid Ali Heather and I am talking on this subject for the postgraduate students. Now aplastic anemia, what do you mean by aplastic anemia? It means the three lines are affected. Basically, dominantly, whether it is the RBC line or the WBC index or the platelet index. This is aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia is the terminology which I use for the clinicians and for the hematologists the same is pancytopenia that is all three lines are affected predominantly the either the RBC or WBC or platelets are affected the same terminology another terminology is a granulocytosis that is the granulocytes neutrophils that is and monocytes which are the another one, where these are the macrophagic activities which has and lymphocytes. If these are affected, this is called the agronocytosis, whether qualitatively or quantitatively. Now these are the terminology which I have just told you about the aplastic anemia is concerned, the etiology is manifold. It may be acquired or hereditary. Hereditary, hereditary it is associated with like the conditions which I have told you, the Fanconi's type of anemias or this uh, karyototic congenita and other idiopathic and that is the uh, 50 to 65 percent of the cases are idiopathic. We don't know exactly the cause of the aplasia. We don't know. And the drugs are the quiet causes, very important drugs, antineoplastic drugs, antimicrobial drugs, specifically talking about the chloramphenicol, anti inflammatory drugs, specifically talking about the endomethacin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and anti -er uh, -er drugs like gold salts or cortisine, and the analgesic drug like the, uh, the uh, salicylamide or aspirin in large doses, and anti -er drugs like quinidine, like for example the anti drugs, carbimazole, methamazole, and uh, the propylthiouracil and sulfonamides and derivatives and diuretics like the acetazolamide or the uh, chlorothiazide, the frusamide, hypoglycemic agent like propylamide and tolbutamide, antihistaminic drugs like the chlorophenramine, sedatives like, for example, the, uh, the uh, drugs we use are chlorodiazepoxide, chloropromazine, lactyl, that is lithium, Naprobamate, etc. It means a very long list of the drugs out there. These are the required causes of the aplastic anemia. Radiation is another cause. Benzene and insecticide we use in the fields, they may cause the aplastic anemia. Viruses are there. They, they are, of course, the, the viruses which are causing the viral hepatitis, specifically speaking, they are causing it. Like Epstein Barr virus, also including the parvovirus and B, B19 and uh, 
one uh, specific virus which was detected recently, hepatitis G, is the virus, the major infection associated with the uh, marrow failure, the hepatitis G. Now the pregnancy uh, may cause required type of uh, uh, plastic anemia and uh, the pathogenesis and uh, relationship between the pregnancy and the plastic anemia may be the autoantibodies uh, uh, are formed and they are cross-reacting with it. Another cause which, uh, which has I already discussed is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria where are the deficiencies of the plasma membrane, uh, the, 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 the structure the cytoskeleton, uh, there are certain substances which are deficient. And there are other causes as well uh, of this, like the eosinophilic fasciitis and uh, SLE can cause congenital disorders like Fanconi anemia, I already told you about it, maybe the possibility of this and uh, the uh, actually the management in this case, the try to rule out the primary cause. If you rule out the primary cause, then it is fine. So the offending agent should be, it should be prohibited. Because it has uh, the differential diagnosis depending upon the etiology. It is concerned whether which uh, cell line is gone. It means that the RBC index is dominantly gone or the WBC index or, or platelet index. Treatment is usually supportive. If you cannot remove the cause, then of course it's a supportive one. In a severe type of anemia, the PEC cell should be given in this case. And uh, the risk of bleeding is because it's more and more. If the platelets are less than 30,000, you have to give the platelet concentrate accordingly. An immunosuppressive agent can be given, like the anti thermocyte globulin, as a very good rule in the uh, in, in, in the management of the aplastic anemia. And uh, the other one which you can you can give are the hemopathic growth factors. Remember their names, so that's all. That is the granulocyte colony, colony stimulating factor, GCSF, or granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, GMCSF, interleukin 1 or 3 and 6, and the stem cell factor. These are the uh, new strategies which have developed to manage this aplastic anemia. If all else fail, then you have to go for the bone marrow transplantation either, or in certain selected cases, go for the gene therapy. This is how we manage it. Another variant is PPRCA, pure red cell aplasia. Now, this is maybe possibility of a hereditary type which is called the diamond uh, black pawn syndrome. And it is uh, usually occurs in the neonates, the diagnosis. And uh, they said that it is related with the parvovirus infection and it's cross, uh, crossing the placenta and it's causing this type of a problem. And it is also associated, the pure red cell anemia is associated with the thymoma and lymphoid malignancies and uh, SAD and Rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, you know the parvo B19 may cause this uh, PRCA, that is pure cell anemia. This virus has a tropism for the erythroid precursors and lysis them. If there is a thymoma, management is remove the thymoma. If it is, you are, it is not associated with the thymoma, you go for the supportive therapy. Any minutes of minutes of the therapy. Or you can go for even afterwards, if it's all are failed, then go for the bone marrow transplantation. Another cause of the anemia, which is seen and overlooked, and this is the topic, the myelodysplastic syndromes. The myelodysplastic syndromes is a big subject. Actually, it is written uh, in the books, in a very few words have been given. And this is very important type of a disease which you are looking for. The myelo, myelo means definitely a bone marrow and dysplasia, dysplastic changes are seen, overlooked and they come to us 
as a case of anemia in elderly persons. Usually elderly persons are involved. Geriatric population. Why it is important? The anemia in the old age is important. Why it is important? Because in anemia, if it is normochromic, normocytic type of anemia in old age, then this disease should be included. Why it is included? Because the myelodysplastic syndromes are the precursors of the of pre leukemic disorders. They will cause the myeloproliferative syndromes or the lymphoproliferative syndromes. Dominantly the myeloproliferative syndromes, that is acute leukemia or chronic macular leukemia. That is why it is important. It may be the early sign. You can detect it and you can manage it. The myelodysplasias. The myelodysplasia means dysplastic changes I have seen. That you have, if you have come across, uh, you know, CBC, very carefully reading, if you have read it very carefully, from up, what, up, down, then you go for the peripheral blood cell also. Now here you find the anemia, which is the normochromic, normocytic usually, and there's some, you know, the mild leukopenia or mild thrombocytopenia is there, but the dominant is the uh, red blood, WRBC, and then the WBC and then the platelets. Now why this is, if you see the peripheral blood film, you find the the polycholecytosis or other things that I already told you, anisocytosis, etc. Or the blast cells are seen because the, it is a hurried syndrome because the, the bone marrow is not responding to the in the normal lineage and it will cause this, pro, this type of a problem. Immediately you have to go for the bone marrow biopsy and you can diagnose it. One clue is this that there will be a relative monocytosis in these patients. This you can find. Usually monocyte normally is 2 to 8 percent. To go for the absolute monocyte count, if it is more than 10 to 12 percent, it means that this is a relative monocytosis. And if it is associated with anemia, go for the bone marrow biopsy and you can go for the diagnosis or you can make this diagnosis. And this is important because it will cause, in few years, the leukemias. So they are pre-leukemic disorders, pre-leukemic disorders. That is why I am talking about it. Otherwise, I have to leave this subject. This is for the purely the clinical uh, hematology subject. The history is this: uh, that in 1938. First time it is described as a pre-leukemic. The terminology we used at that time as pre-leukemia. In 1963, they have actually uh, done the bone marrow biopsies and in a detail in the in an electromyograph, and they they uh, label this condition and smoldering acute leukemia. And then in 1970, 1976. And uh, the what is called as the French, American, British cooperative group, all are these countries, the, the European countries, the Britain and the French. They developed the this condition as the myelodysplasia. Myelodysplasia is a family actually, according to WHO. They are pre-leukemic disorders because in 1976. Uh, they find the anemia is refracted to every therapy with excess blast cells and a clue to the chronic uh, myelocytic leukemia, monomyelocytic leukemia. These are the pre leukemic state. You find it refracted anemia with excess blasts and the uh, mild, uh, the uh, myelocytic leukemia with the monocyte predominance. This is called pre-leukemic state. And this classification, they said, they call it myelodysplastic syndrome. So it's a family. 
Now this is the hematological plus, what is called as blood cell maturation, all are elaborated in front of you. The myeloid stem cell will cause the T series, the RBC, the WBC and the platelets. And remember these terminologies which are written here. Because these are the basics of it. And lymphoid stem cell is also causing what is called as lymphocyte. They are forming the lymphoblast and forming the lymphocytes. Because lymphoid stem cell is also found in other situations. As you say that it is the reticular endothelial system which are responsible for the formation of the lymphocyte. The myeloblastic syndromes, according to WHO, it is classified or FAB classification is refractory anemia, refractory anemia with the ring cytoblast, or refractory anemia with the excess blood cells, or it may be the chronic or myeloid leukemia associated, or it is the another terminology used is the RAB1, the refractory anemia with excess blood cells in transformation. They are transforming. So this is FAB classification. WHO classification in front of you. Difficult to remember. Yes, if it is uh, not easy one. But the first one, remember, refractory anemia. So we are only using the refractory anemia. So MDS is a classification depending upon the bone marrow biopsy. It means that whether it is refractory anemia or refractory anemia with the ring cytoblast or refractory anemia with the excess blast wagara wagara. These are the syndromes I already said, these are the conditions which you see in the geriatric population, more than 70 years of age. Because of it, the cell lines are affected, the carmosis or fatigue, fatigue, pallor, abnormal bleeding, repeated infections. These are the presentations which come across with anemia. The MDS etiology is de novo. We don't know exactly. I will already said the benzene exposure, cigarette smoking, viruses, halconia anemia, alkylating agent, chemotherapy, radiation, etc. So median survival myelodysplastic syndrome. It is uh, definitely a condition which will, uh, which will go into the chronic. Uh, it, it is myelo. Uh, Mother type of uh, leukemia, which you will come across. Prognostic scoring was given, if you cannot remember it easily, and it is written in front of you that how much percentage of blood cells and ketotyping and cytopenias are there. Depending upon this, there are three variables. International prognostic scoring system also, also developed. A detailed account has been given. Although for the clinicians are concerned, it is difficult to remember. As far as the hematology is, is concerned, they have to remember it. The overall median survival was 5.7 years, 2.4 years, depending upon the scoring system. Intermediate risk or the low risk or the high risk, etc. So it is depending upon this intermediate risk or whatever it is, the it is the uh, actually uh, it can be classified scoring upon the scoring system or prognostic scoring system. Defective anemia, yes, in this condition you find the myeloblast is less than one percent in the blood and less than five percent in the marrow, and you have got less than fifteen percent ringed cytoblast, cytoblastic anemia, ringed cytoblast. They stained with definitely the Persian blue. You see it in the in the in your uh, uh, what is called peripheral blood stain. Easily you can detect it. And other etiologies may be found associated with the vitamin D the vitamin deficiency, viral infection, congenital disease, drug toxic exposure. History has been taken, and this is the, maybe the cause of this uh, refractory anemia. But if it is refractory anemia and you find this type of uh, blood picture, it means that they are pre leukemic disorder and you have to definitely 
uh, interact here to stop it. So it is about five to ten percent of the uh, of these these cases. And I have already studied less than fifteen percent ring syndromes, relative monocytosis associated. Prognosis is about sixty six months. This is fair for the anisopolycarditis virusitis. That is, the sizes are different and the shapes are different. This is in the bone marrow split. Again, it is the erythropoietic abnormalities which are shown here. Megaloblastoid change on the bone marrow split. split. Big cells, nucleated RBCs. Ring cytoplasts are concerned. I already said that. It is very important to identify the anemia with the ring cytoplasts. So there are more than 15% ring cytoplasts in the bone marrow without any IR rods. The IR rods are another terminology we, they are using, a hematologist. We will we'll see in a moment what is these IR rods of cancer. But the ring cytoplasts, these are the accumulation of the, actually of the uh, byproducts of the RN and it makes a ring inside the RBC. The pattern you see is the ring type of a, a formation white pressure group. The ring is slow blast, if you tell me the ring slow blast is concerned, the genetics is that it is a, the clonal clonal chromosome abnormalities and the, it is it should be done and the minimum survival for these uh, cases are about six years. And one to two percent rate of progression to equal leukemia are there. So we check it out and manage it. Now this is diamorphic red cell population, small pale red cells, normal red cells in comparison you see. This is another point uh, pointing to the myelodysplasias. Ring cytoplasts, you see here, that is the, you see here, see the marker, my cursor, these are the rings, these are the rings, ring cytoplasts, with a Persian blue staining. That is very specifically on the plasma lemma you see here, one, two, three, four. Megaloblastoid chain, you see, a big, very big cells. As far as the RBCs are concerned, this one is a nucleus. The nucleus is nucleus is much bigger one. Refractory cytopenia with a multi lineage dysplasia. There's another variety which is describing. It is older patient. Twenty five percent of cases are this multi lineage dysplasia. It has also the neutrophil abnormality like hypogranulation and uh, pseudo pulsar heat. Hypersegmentation means that is there with the bars, bar, bells. We find as a morphology is concerned. And the mago moment it may include the hypolobulation and micro magocaryocytes are seen. These are abnormal and definitely not normal. It is a multi lineage, means the RBC is involved, okay, fine. But the WBC may be involved and also the platelets. And here in this condition, they they said that they are related with the clonal chromosome abnormalities, trisomy eight, deletion, on monosomy seven, etc. Medium survival is thirty three months only, means two and a half years. Eleven percent rate is it will turn out to be the acute leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia. So. The same one, the other one are concerned, what is called the pelgar hute neutrophil. Now this is the accumulation you see here. It is in the neutrophil. In the neutrophil you, you do, don't see, uh, you see the, the, the nucleus, you see the cytoplasm, etc. But here the lobulation look and the staining with the patient, patient blue bilobe type of a thing. This is the pulgar huge type of a anomaly. Actually the, the pulgaroid type, 
this is the problem of the anomaly we see in the bone marrow aspirate is the neutrophil which is seen here this one these are the neutrophil by load very very high staining is there and this is the process of bone marrow aspirate you see the there is erythropoietic abnormalities are seen in paleness and dark cells, nucleated RBCs, different type of moieties are seen. Hypersegmented neutrophils, segmentation are much there in this, in the neutrophil, hypersegmentation. Also seen in the vitamin B12 deficiency. Micro-megokaryocyte, some are very small, some are very, very big. The microcaryocyte with the micro-microcyte, both are there. Refer to anyone with the excess blood cells. Means the, the, the blood cells are more. It is, it is anemia with the 15 to 90 percent minor blood in the bone marrow. But in this condition, it may be more than that, maybe 20 percent or more than that. This is another type of the myelodysplasia. And they occur in the usually younger age group, about 50 years of age. Dysplasia of all three lines of 10 percent. Neutrophils show with hypogranulation or hypersegmentation and pseudo or huge in, uh, anomalies, this pulverite type of uh, anomaly. And granules, another granule which have uh, hematologists say is the Chirac Hijak Higashi granules, stained with the specific stain. Attaining uh, substances. Microcaryocyte abnormalities may include the micro microcaryocyte hypolobulation. Excess blood cells, excess blood cells, more than 20%. They will lead definitely to the uh, malad leukemia very, very quickly. Survival is less than 10 months or 18 months. Hypercellular bone marrow. Again, this, the, the all, all lines are affected and there are, the bone marrow is full of the cell, cells and cells from the erythroid or from the, as concerned, and the WBC moieties or the platelet moieties. Blast and hypogranulation. Blast cells are seen with hypogranulation. The granules are seen should be seen properly in the WBC, but it is not seen here in this condition. Myeloblast with all rods. And these are the all rods, this one. This is the another accumulation of the of the material which is stained with the Prussian blue. And it is very important all rods as far as classifying the leukemia are concerned. Shidaki Shakti like granules are seen here, you see, this one, like this, granulation. Because these are the Shidaki Gashi, it's not, a syndrome is there of the Shidaki Gashi in the platelet abnormalities also, but this is not the platelet abnormalities, these are granules. And it is uh, classified by the Shidaki Gashi, with the Chinese. Uh, or Japanese person, and uh, if these are there, this is shown here, like granules, then definitely the, uh, it turn out to the leukemia is more. The myeloid process is one classified, you cannot classify whether it is refractive anemia or refractive anemia with the ring cytoblast or, or the excess blood cells or excess blood cells in transformation, or in the, you, have, you find the, in the, the pugor heart anomaly or higashi granules, etc. oil rods, that is called the uh, uh, chronic uh, myelomonocytic leukemia, that is called. Uh, it is unclassified. It is not included in this. The unclassification incidence we don't know, but younger person may be involved. Bone marrow biopsy may be hypocellular and dysplastic microcaryocyte may be prominent. Here, 
the crew is dysplasia of the mago karyocytes. Genetics are may definitely involved in this condition. Prognosis, we don't know exactly what will be the uh, fate of this, these people, but you have to manage accordingly. If the cause is found, you have to remove the cause. Isolated abnormality are concerned, specifically chromosomal is concerned, deleted of 5Q abnormalities. These are presented with the refractory anemia, very severe, and thrombocytosis, what is called reactive thrombocytosis may be present. So refractory anemia with the refractory thrombocytosis may prove to the syndrome which is associated with the chromosomal abnormality. They are seen actually in middle age to older women. Now, the hypolobulated megacarcyte, this is lobulation in the megacaryocytes are concerned. The genome of megacarcyte, platelets are very, very big one, megacaryoblast, and then the smaller one slightly, megacaryocyte will turn into the platelets. Lobulation. Yeah, they are lobulated structure usually, but hypolobulation. Absolutely, there is no lobulation out there, or very, very small uh, evidence of a lobulation. Because it's a little, little point, then it can be very important. How much sensitive it is, it can be sensitive. So, myeloblastic syndrome, or myeloblastic diseases, are these interlinked diseases. Hai. And that will be turned out if you don't manage it, then the malopolarifative disease will be converted. The purpose of telling the truth is this. This is a very important slide. This is for all the people. You can see that the diagnostic criteria of the chronic malomonistic leukemia is very difficult to get rid of it. What is it? It is a persistent peripheral monocytosis. It is an absolute monocytosis आपको मिलेगा ज़्यादा two to eight percent होता है इसमें जो होता है वो ten percent twelve percent thirteen percent fourteen percent से भी ज़्यादा होता है तो no Philadelphia chromosome इसमें नहीं मिलेगा B C R A B L fusion नहीं मिलेगी जो कि होना चाहिए ये थी C M L का खुलासा ये ही है इसमें नहीं मिलती पर कैसे twenty percent से कम blood cells होते हैं bone marrow a dysplastic type of bone marrow will get you. If this condition is getting you, this is showing you that this is a chronic monocytic leukemia, which is a missing diagnosis. Because chronic monocytic leukemia, which will be saved, will be clear cut. It will be like a leukocytosis. I am saying that it is related to the monocytosis. It is not related to the leukocytosis. The patient will be saved in the leukocytosis. If the patient has not come to the patient, then how do you say that the leukemia is going to be done? That's why this is the case. This is the case of the leukemia. This is the case of the leukemia. If you don't have to get rid of it, then how do you manage it? This is the case of the leukemia. 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 अगर इसको आपने पकड़ लिया है तो इसका मतलब है कि ये हो जाएगा ये मायने हैं इसके अब ट्रीटमेंट अगर आप देंगे तो ट्रीटमेंट रिक्वायरिंग हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन है फिर इसको आप सारा का सारा पूरा एग्जामिनेशन पेशेंट का करके फिर आप इंटेंसिव कीमोथेरेपी देंगे या फिर डीएमटी या जीन थेरेपी देंगे हाई इंटेंसिटी पेशेंट पर लो इंटेंसिटी पेशेंट में तो आप ये करेंगे कि हेमोपेटिक ग्रोथ फैक्टर जैसे मैंने बताए थे कि आप इसे प्रोटीन दें या कॉलोनी स्टिमुलेटिंग फैक्टर्स वगैरह देकर इसको रिस्पांस कराया जाता है तो और लो इंटेंसिटी की वजह से भी जिसके साइड इफेक्ट कम हो उनको दिया जाता है क्लासिफिकेशन भी डिपेंड करता है कि आपने प्रोग्नास्टिक जो इसका मार्कर्स थे स्कोरिंग सिस्टम पे कितने मिले आपको इस पर डिपेंड करता है तो इसके अंदर जो है ना वो एम का ट्रीटमेंट ही यही है कि आपको जो है ना इसको रोकना है अगर आप रोकना चाहते हैं तो इसकी आप आप स्कोरिंग सिस्टम निकाल लीजिए और निकालने के बाद आप देखिए कि हाई रिस्क कितना है या लो रिस्क कितने पेशेंट हैं उसकी बुनियाद के ऊपर इसको मैनेजमेंट कर दीजिए 
टूरिस्ट पे तो सपोर्टिव केयर और कॉलोनी स्टेबिलिटी हारमोन्स हैं ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन हैं लेकिन हाई इंटेंसिटी में आपको फुल ब्लोन थेरेपी देनी पड़ेगी आपको इम्यूनो सप्रेशन के साथ तब तब जाके ये मैनेज हो जाएगा ये आगे टर्न आउट नहीं होगा इस और ये जब आगे टर्न आउट नहीं होगा तो इसका मतलब है कि जो आप क्रॉनिक मलिकीमिया को मैनेज करना चाहते थे वो आपके लिए आसान हो जाएगा ये बाय नहीं है इसके अब आजकल जो है ना रिमा से डिस्प्ले दिया हुआ है सीवियर है इंटेंस हाई इंटेंसिटी एम है उसमें तो आप बी कर देते हैं या कुछ केसेस के अंदर जो है ना वो जीन थेरेपी अगर वो क्रोमोसोमल से रिलेशन है तो आप कर देते हैं मैनेज कर देते हैं इसको तो इसका बहुत अच्छा आउटकम हो जाता है और इसका सर्वाइवल रेट बढ़ जाता है इसका मगर कुछ ड्रग्स है स्पेसिफिकली उसके नाम याद रखें जैसे एज एसिटीन है अप्रूव्ड ट्रीटमेंट एम डी एस का हाइपोमिथेलिटिंग एजेंट है ये बड़ा ज़बरदस्त ड्रग है जब ये निकली थी तो उन्होंने कहा था कि हम एम को कवर कर लेंगे इससे अब ये सारे बायोलॉजिकल है जिनसे बेसिकली तो रेलवेट जो है इसमें से थेलोडोमाइड डेरिवेटिव है थेलोडोमाइड डेरिवेटिव है एक्चुअली ये थेलोडोमाइड से डरा हुआ है सप्रेसर है ये बेसिकली ये सप्रेसर एजेंट है और ये भी बिल्कुल इम्यूनो सप्रेशन का काम करता है ये रेलवेट भी देते थे ये पारा निक्रोसाइड है पारामिथिन निक्रोसाइड है डेसीटबिन ये भी कुछ लोग इस्तेमाल करते हैं मगर इसकी टॉक्सिसिटी बहुत ज़्यादा है और अदर एजेंट जो है वो इस्तेमाल कर रहे थे कि हाइपोसर एम डी एस ट्रीटमेंट में इम्यूनो थेरेपी करें ड्रग्स दें जो इम्यूनो सप्रेस करें जो कि या फिर जो है ना जो इम्यूनो सप्रेशन की जगह आप एंटी थर्मोसाइड प्रॉब्लम दे दें ए टी जी से कहते हैं वो भी दे सकते हैं इसमें फ्यूचर थेरेपी में ये कहते हैं कि आजकल जो है ना वो वालपरिक एसिड जो है ये स्टोन डेक्टेज एक्टिविटी करता है इनिबिट करता है उसको और इसको अगर सैनिटाइज कर दें आप ए टी आर ए के साथ ऑल ट्रांसटोनिक एसिड के साथ तो ये जो है इंडक्शन ऑफ द ए एम एल विट्रो में कर देता था ये वालपरिक एसिड उनका ख्याल है कि इसको कम्बाइन किया जाए और इसको कम्बाइन भी करें इम्यूनोजेशन के साथ तो ये बेनिफिट पेशेंट को मिल सकता है अभी ये जो है ना वर्कआउट किया जा रहा है हुआ नहीं है लेकिन इन फ्यूचर में ये करेंगे इस तरह से दोनों को कम्बाइन कर देंगे और पीछे वाली जो ड्रग है एक, एक कोई भी ड्रग है इसे डाल दें तो फिर ये ज़्यादा अच्छी थेरेपी हो जाएगी ये सब्जेक्ट जो है ना ये मैंने आपसे पहले भी कहा था कि बहुत डाइवर्स सब्जेक्ट है ये एम का जो है लेकिन इसका नाम याद रखना ज़रूरी है ये कब जो है ना आप सपोज कर सकते हैं एक्सपेक्ट कर सकते हैं ये याद रखिए मैं इतनी बात आपको याद होनी चाहिए कि ओल्ड एज का पेशेंट डिफ्रेक्टिव एनीमिया के साथ आ रहा है और आपको वो डायग्नोसिस नहीं मिल रही है तो आप इसको सोचिए या ये कि आप अच्छे पढ़ने वाले हैं और आपने सी बी सी को अच्छी तरह देखना आता है आपको तो आपने रिलेटिव मोनोसाइटोसिस पकड़ लिया इसमें कि इसके अंदर जो है मोनोसाइट एब्सोलूट काउंट ज़्यादा है और है नहीं मैं पेशेंट को तो फिर आप जो है ना बर्म बायोपसी कराएँ जो इसके एक्सपर्ट्स हैं जिसको जानते हैं कि कैसे की जाती है वहाँ से ये पता चल जाएगा कि इस ये कौन सी टाइप का जो है अगर एम डी एस है तो कौन सी टाइप एम डी एस आपने पकड़ा है आपने ब्लड प्रेफर में या ब्लड सी बी सी में फिर आपको बायोपसी से ये पता चलेगा कि ये जो है ये कौन सी टाइप है ये इसकी एफ ए बी क्लासीफिकेशन की और फिर उसका मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी जो आजकल आई हुई है कि मैंने आपको बता दी कि सपोर्टिव थेरेपी के अलावा की बात हो रही है स्पेसिफिक थेरेपी जल से डबे है वर्परी कैसे एक्स्ट्रा है वगैरह वगैरह ये काम है हेमाटोलॉजिस्ट का मगर ये सवाल जो है ना फर्ज कीजिए आप इम्तहान दे रहे हैं एफ सी पी एस का और जो आपका एग्जामिनर है जो आपके कपल एग्जामिनर होते हैं दो आदमी होते हैं एक की हेमाटोलॉजी बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग है वो आपसे एम डी एस तक ले जाता है आपको किसी एक दिन का चीट कर अनिमिया आप जस्टिफाई नहीं कर पा रहे हैं तो वो एम डी एस में ले गया अगर एम डी एस के बारे में कुछ भी नॉलेज है तो वो आपके काम आ जाएगी यहाँ पर इस वीडियो को देखने के बाद थोड़ा बहुत कुछ भी बताएंगे तो बहुत खुश हो जाएगा वो 
कि भाई इसको ये मालूम है कि प्री लिबिक लिबिक कंडीशन है और ये इसको क्लासीफाई कैसे करते हैं और कब सस्पेक्ट करते हैं आई थिंक कि ये मेरी बातचीत आपको ज़्यादा भारी पड़ गई होगी मैं स्टूडेंट के लिए बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ मैं पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट से बात कर रहा हूँ तो उम्मीद है कि ये आप थोड़ा सा जो है ना ये मैंने समरी बयान कर दी है इसकी समझ लें आप तो आप इसको याद रखने की कोशिश करेंगे एंड फ्यूचर इन शाह एक दो दफा वीडियो को देख के आप किताब को भी सामने रख लें तो ये आपकी समझ में आ जाएगा वमाबलाब असलकम वरहल वरक सीन see you with the other uh, problem that is malopolar refractive disorders and nephropolar refractive disorders